Hi there. At NerdKits, we recently got this 3-in-1 combo lathe mill machine. We're going to use this to make metal parts that you're going to see in some of our upcoming project videos. We've just been getting set up and getting used to the machine. One of the early limitations we found is in the z-axis of the milling. Now, the quill height knob is marked in 0.042 inch increments. If you've never worked with a machine like this before, 42 thousandths of an inch may sound pretty small. But in metalworking, it's actually a huge distance. It's especially bad when you consider that our x and y axes, we can position things down to one or two thousandths of an inch. So in this video tutorial, we're going to talk about how to use a USB nerd kit plus digital calipers to build a digital readout, or DRO, for this machine's z-axis. In the process, we're going to talk about some interesting concepts, like how to look at the digital signal coming out of these calipers, and how to hook up buttons and switches as part of a microcontroller's user interface. First, let's take a quick look at digital calipers. These are a cool instrument that can measure down to thousandths of an inch, and you can get one of these for just about 20 bucks. There's some cool stuff going on inside here too, with a capacitive measurement system that uses precisely spaced printed circuit board parts to get high resolution. If we pop off this cover, we'll see there are four traces. This is a data connector that we're going to use to pull information into the microcontroller. We've taken another set of calipers and soldered wires onto each of the four traces. So now let's go to the oscilloscope and see what's coming out. Out of these four wires, one is ground, one is the battery's positive terminal, one is a clock line, and one is a data line. The calipers periodically transmit their reading as a digital output over the clock and data lines. The first 24 bits here are just an integer number of counts with 20,480 counts per inch. We can use our microcontroller to wait for each bit to come in. Because the calipers are designed to run off a single 1.5 volt battery, we had to make a little bit of analog circuitry with a few transistors to power the calipers from our 5 volt supply and also to do level shifting so the digital signal from the calipers would be big enough to feed to our microcontroller. For more details about the analog parts, please see the website about this project at www.nerdkits.com. At this point, we were able to write a little bit of code to read each bit as the clock line changed and then to keep track of that number plus the distance in inches. As I move the calipers, you can see the number in the left column changing. Plus, the microcontroller is converting it to inches. For our international customers, don't worry, showing millimeters is easy too. If you take a look at the code, we've tried to structure it to be fairly readable. We have a read bit function, which waits for a transition on the clock line and then reads the data line. We sample the data line for each bit a few times in quick succession and take the majority winner, just to reduce the impact of temporary glitches. This code also has to keep in mind that the level shifting circuit we showed earlier actually turns zeros into ones and ones into zeros, so we have to flip them back to make any sense of the data coming at us. Then there's a read bits function, which calls read bit 24 times and sticks the result into a single signed 32-bit integer variable. The only tricky part here is dealing with two's complement notation, which is how negative numbers are often expressed in binary. If the most significant bit was a one, then the number sent by the calipers was a negative number, and we have to sign extend into our 32-bit variable by setting the top 8 bits to all 1s, so that the number will be represented properly. The last part of the code just waits for a new group of bits to come in, waiting for a quiet period before the data transmission starts. Without looking at the timings, it would look like a continuous stream of 1s and zeros, not discrete groups of 24-bit numbers. The next modification we made was to add two 2N7000 MOSFETs to let us put the calipers into a special high-speed mode. This lets us get a new reading from the calipers about 40 times per second, instead of about 3 times per second. The last part of the electronic side is building a user interface so that this can act as a freestanding system. We're going to add one push button to reset the measurement to zero, and one switch so we can set which direction is positive. This gives us a great opportunity to review how to connect buttons and switches to a microcontroller. The push button included with the USB nerd kit has three terminals, labeled C for common, NO for normally open, and NC for normally closed. When the button isn't being pressed, there's a connection between C and NC. The non-pressed state is considered normal, and so the normally open terminal is open, or open circuit, or unconnected. The normally closed terminal forms a closed circuit and is connected to the common terminal. 
When the button is pressed, there's a connection between C and NO. The switches included in the USB Nerd Kit also have three terminals. They aren't labeled, but it works very similarly to the push button. When the switch is to the left, the left and center pins are connected to each other. While if the switch is to the right, the right and center pins are connected. A microcontroller's input pin reads a voltage and uses that to generate a binary 0 or 1 that the microcontroller code can use. So how can we use a switch opening or closing to create a changing voltage? One way is we could connect one side of the switch to ground, the other side to plus 5 volts, and connect the common terminal directly to the microcontroller input. That would work fine, but there's a more elegant way that you should know about too. Instead of connecting one side of the switch to plus 5, we can add a resistor. Now, when the switch is open, the voltage at this node is kept high by the pull-up resistor, and the microcontroller reads a 1. When the switch is closed, the resistance of the path through the switch is much less than the resistance through the pull-up resistor. So the voltage here becomes close to the ground, and this is read as a 0 by the microcontroller. There are a few advantages to doing it this way. One is that we don't need a switch with the third terminal. This lets us use a broader selection of switches. Another advantage is that with our microcontroller, this pull-up resistor can actually be built into the chip, and you can turn it on with one line of code, so we don't need any external components. So to connect a switch, all we need to do is hook one terminal to ground and one terminal to the microcontroller's input pin. This works both for the push button and for the switch in our project. Now, we can just write a little code to look at the state of the button and switch, and decide to zero the scale or invert the displayed coordinates. We've mounted this whole system to the machine by manufacturing some parts to hold the calipers along the quill. On the bottom side, we machine an aluminum collar which clamps to the bottom of the quill in place of the original plastic collar. Then, there's an arm that comes out toward the headstock, and one end of the caliper is screwed into the arm. The caliper passes through a void in the milling head casting. At the top of the mill head, we've machined an aluminum bracket which clamps onto the end of the other piece of the calipers. This piece of the caliper is attached to the reading head, so by clamping it solidly here, we're holding the reading head at a fixed position as the quill moves up and down. This means the caliper distance is opening and closing, so we can measure it and show it on our display. Now, when we move the quill up and down, the calipers are opening and closing, and that's sending information to our LCD display over here. Now, instead of being able to move the quill to a particular spot within 42 thousandths of an inch, we can do it within one or two thousandths. We've got some work to do to make this system a bit more permanent, and to add a similar system to the X and Y axes of our table, but then we'll be able to make more accurate parts in less time. Hopefully you've learned something about interfacing with digital devices, working with switches and buttons, and integrating electronics into a mechanical project. For more information about this project, or more videos like this one, please visit us at www.nerdkits.com.